business. So I'm here to present the health department budget. And I have budgets and budgets and budgets. This is the health department county budget for 2015. I'll make sure you copy it for everybody. Oh, we have a copy. Two copies. Just black and white. Don't make you one. You getting one. Don't make one for shame. <laughs> 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 no, I'm over it. She's not. Yeah. She's the one choosing not. Just got through doing that and strung for three days, so I'm not going to do it. So, yeah. Yeah. so your experience. the thing that does would be maintenance for each scratch for easy to clean, better or worse. Mm -hmm. budget for the windows though.
can we have the cover an answer on the race? Can we find out by next week? No, we can. Whether well, she can use a reserve fund? When we have a break, I can on the statute that time and tell you this. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, the other budgets that are coming to you are WIC budgets. I don't know if you want to look at them or not, but the breast feeding for council budget came in at 7400 which they'll probably mark it down, which we did last year. And then they send me notes that I'm using up all my money and I'm going to get and leave my budget alone. And then the WIC budget is $24,810. And I see that the um, auditors wanted me to talk to you about writing off people instead of just doing it. Yeah. Well, this is the one that's pending. Um, these people lived in Stafford. They're not there anymore. They live in Lawrence. And he had a New York State insurance, which was a pain in the butt to, excuse me, pain in behind to um, work with. Finally, um, they paid $126.50 to him because we weren't never. So I have sent him a couple of notices and I gave him until June 10th to pay in full. Since December, it's just been awful. So the insurance company sent him the money so to send that to you? Mm -hmm. And you never got it? He never got it? She didn't get it. She didn't he did. Yeah, he, he got, got it. He got, he got paid. Got it. I didn't get paid. Yeah. Or you can do the same collection if you don't need it. So do you do the set off deal? Most of mine are so little, I don't, but um, I can. I have people. I don't remember what the audit report was on. They recommended it. Yeah. See, we don't collect like Social Security, but somebody said they just take more money on their end. Oh. Uh, he He's still there? Yeah. Where? In his house. They split the sheets. Mm -hmm. The daughter? <laughs> the mother of the mother of the mother Yeah. The auditors would like it. 
motion from these guys allowing I think we should at least send her a bill and a letter stating what happened. Just to see. I don't consider a bill. Check on the statute. Uh, with their yeah, just let me know. I can wait till spring. It's pretty busy anyway. Okay. Very good. Thank you. actually paid already. Um, waiting on secondaries or they've paid entirely. The only ones you're waiting on are hand care, which is your Medicaid. Mm -hmm. And they're written, so that would take a little bit. And we collected $14,467. This is May's. right now, Medicare Blue Cross and Blue Cross Health. Um, the core source is actually a written written claim and the preferred health. Everything else is electronic. So those should be paying for the next couple of weeks. Um, the amount of thirteen one hundred and we collected eleven thousand twenty three twenty seven. I had to kind of go through and make my own. That way we can go through these. Um, July, okay, of course, we had the 33 accounts. There's still 33 active accounts out there for 21679 In August, there were six accounts. Two of them were turned in error. Um, one was turned in error. One was a deceased no estate in the amount of $2,005, which left the amount $1,478. Um, four of these accounts have actually paid for the $125, they've been set up on fees, $25 looks like, um, which left the amount of $1,353. In October, there's 27 accounts. Two were turned as duplicate claims in the amount of $1,310, which left $18,125. Um, there were one paid in full for $620, which left 24 active accounts for $17,505. Um, November, there were six accounts. Three of them were duplicate listings. Um, one of, or in the amount of 1940 um, in the amount of 11, um, 1120 plus 540 is one of them that they actually canceled because they were unable to forward. Um, left two accounts out there at 580 And then 14 accounts in December, two of them have paid in full in the amount of 283 which left 12 in the amount of 6013 February, there were 34 accounts. Four of them um, were canceled. Two of them were bankruptcies, two in the amount of $50 each. One is a closed and combined account for $595, and then one was $952, which is a timely filing write-off for insurance, uh, which left the amount of $23,074. Uh, 26 active accounts out there, four of them have paid in the amount of $1,286, and left the account of $21,788. March, there's still 11 accounts out there in $10,059. In April, there's three accounts still in the amount of 2168. 
So we had 134 accounts placed for 90901 11 of them have been canceled uh, in the amount of 6902 which left the amount of 83459 out there. Um, seven accounts are paid. Uh, actually, the additional five up here, I guess, that are on that made payments, 125. Um, so they have collected uh, 2,314, and the balance there is 81,146, and we actually collected 1,676 out of that when they took their. It's a lot of. You have to go add your own numbers in to make them all work, but. I rank a headway, but not very well, that's another thing. So July, we had talked about having them in there for a year and then turning them to Kansas set off. Now, we need to make a decision whether we want to take all those accounts and turn them over to Kansas set off, or do we want to give them more time? Because they're both or not? Uh, I, need to, I, in, I need to find can out. Can I be in a -I and, and both. at the same time? I, I can check into that and see, because I, really, I think that would be a good idea to have them in both if we uh -huh. can do it. Yeah. So. But like I said, in July that's coming up, so um, I'll get some. I'll talk to uh, Kansas set off and see what we can do on that. They want more time as far as going past July. Yeah, yeah, because they're like, well, we could, because they, they're saying, of course, they're going to argue this, though. We had those accounts. We know about them, and so we're actively pursuing them. If you give them to Kansas set off, they're going to have to start all over again. And I'm going, well, we can see that point. But at the same time, if you're not doing it, then we need to reach out. Kansas set off, so you're pretty well. Mm. I mean, if there's anything there, you're, you're going to get it. Yeah, Kansas yeah. set-off goes after their income tax, yeah. so I mean, it, it's you take a moment. And I it. think they're. I mean, it'd be nice to do both, but we definitely want to do the Kansas set-off. Yeah, I agree with that. Okay. There's also Shane. You had asked about the report, but I just want to show you guys this report that I'm working on. This is all open balances, anything from 2009 to 10 to now. Um, everything you can see, 2013 and 14, have all been resubmitted, taken care of, making phone calls. Um, 2011 and 12, so we've got, there's like 96 accounts out there out of all of these. Everything else is in our books is going to be collectible or in collections. So we're, 96 accounts is all we lack. So we should get that done in the next month, maybe. Michelle is now full time. Um, we're going to be earning these uh, once a month. And Michelle and I are going to divide it up in conquer, so we should be getting those accounts lined out. What uh, what was the other stuff on the audit report for EMS? Mm -hmm. oh, There's a report that the the letter. Well, we get a uh, letter from the auditors of what they find, what they would like to see improved on. EMS. I sent that to you. Didn't I send that to you? Yeah. And I forgot was, to bring that today. Okay. They was, wanted us to do a. Um, Balanced journal. Yeah, with the yeah. treasurer's office. I've gotten those reports. 
Um, I got one at the end of last month and the end of this month, and I need to actually get with Lisa and go through them because I, like this, I have to to be able to study for a little bit right. and understand what I'm looking at, and I want to be able to understand those reports too. Yeah. So I have gotten two of those from her though. So they want us to reconcile with them. Okay. Is what I understood. Yeah, that's I think. Well, I think from what the auditors told us, I think we're making headway. I mean, um, um, slowly, slowly. But I mean, this uh, as big as a problem as this was early, mm -hmm. early on. I mean, I think we could have done leaps and bounds from where we were to where we are today. Yeah. But I, I do think from what the auditors told us that I mean, there's still steps we need to be sure. Right. To I think one on. of those too. I had discussed with an auditor that was there is keeping on top of the current accounts and making sure, like if we're running these reports monthly, we can make sure that that's hanging out there. Right. And I kind of look at it as, this is going to sound weird, but whenever paramedicine going, okay, what can I fix with this account? Why is it not? So you got to stay on top of it and do it. Right. So, right. and that's, this report will help us do that. Okay. So, trying to fix it. Only one other thing for you guys. Remember, I was here and I talked about getting back into protocol with the long spine board. Oh, yeah. Yes, uh, we have a new protocol we have to get the new boards for. Um, I have gotten four different quotes from these um, these guys. The Southeastern had told us 772. They will now do 726.23. But we need eight of them. We need two for each unit. Wow. Because we got four units to stock. <laughs> um, but it's actually, we're taking off all of our long spine boards and we're um, taking off all our scoop stretchers because it's a two in one type of deal. Um, and we could get eight of them in the amount of 51, 10, 24 from Southeastern. What would you do with the old ones? I mean, are they usable? Or do you just throw them or are you reselling? Or? We would probably use them for, for training or just to keep them around. I mean, we're not going to just junk them. But I mean, it's not, they're not going to be used anymore. Nobody could use them in the No. They're, they're being taken out of a completely scope of practice for EMS. All, it's all going to be just seat collar and these boards that are working away. <laughs> Have the money in your budget to do that, or is that actually in the medical supplies budget? What are these things called? Huh? What are these things called? Call boards. What? Call me boards. C O N D I. Combi board. Combi carrier, whatever you want to call it. Well, that's what I thought, but I thought that I wouldn't listen to it. Right. Okay. You need eight of them. Yes. Does your copier scan? You can scan this and put a picture on it. <laughs> okay. I've got very colorful photos for it. And what was the amount? 581024. <laughs> Just ask it. 581024. There's not a picture of it. <laughs> so this is a quote. So that's I don't believe that's got tax unless we get it for tax <coughs> so this is the one you prefer? Mm -hmm. The copy? The copy board, yeah, it's the new one that just changed it. Okay. So how does that work? I mean, if somebody's laying on that and you <laughs> cut half of it open. Now, see, the thing is, what they're saying, the new, the new policy, the new uh, protocol is, and I don't agree with it, Okay, you take a seat collar with somebody that's on board, and there is a pin in there. You pull the pin out, and it comes apart on either side. Uh, just the one pulls one way, the other pulls the other way, and the patient just it doesn't move them. Slides down onto the table. Yeah. Yeah. And picking them up. And yeah. So they're pretty slick. The old but way hurt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the old way says, you don't want to do it. I hope I never have to be on that. <laughs> I was on one like that, I believe. Well, see, next month we'll be doing training on them, so we're going to need people shaking up. Do the creaming, to be put on one, and uh, take them off. Yeah. <laughs> Practice makes perfect. I think it's Kurt's turn. Oh, it's Kurt's yeah. oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want, actually, to Do you have medical supplies? Oh, medical supplies. I thought we had a medical supplies.
be certain you got thirteen thousand left in that bottom line. So do you want to do it for that amount, or do you want to figure out what the shipping and, or do you think that you said they're going to throw the shipping in, or taxes? Um, or? I would like to. I need to figure out what the shipping is actually, because okay. I didn't ask him. So. So we'll wait till next. Week. Yeah, I think we'll wait till we come back to you guys now. Just give me a heads up. Okay. <laughs> those back here. No, you guys can get those in. For reference, so you can show me your friends. Yeah. <laughs> you guys, have any other questions? I don't. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Looks very compatible. Like three minutes? I can be quick because he's at nine. Okay, we got a we got a day today. today. Um, quick update on housing. They have progressed to the point that uh, putting floor trusses on now. We've got the basement floor, right on the basement level. We haven't gotten any bills yet, so. <laughs> well, let's see. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'd like to invite you next. Our economic development's regular weekly meeting is on the second Wednesday of the month at 7 a.m. Um, so at least it would not be an extra trip to town. <laughs> but it is kind of early. Um, we have invited um, Clint Patty, who is an attorney with Frieden and Ryan and Forbes. Um, represented the Southwest Kansas Port Authority. So this is a, a chance for people to talk to an attorney. They've had, I've already kind of started asking these questions, but I feel like I kind of, kind of generally answered I'm not an authority on it. It would be best to have someone like him um, provide that. And I, you know, could maybe be, oh, there you go. Clinton and Patty. Yes. Oh, they worked on that. What time? 7 a.m. is our regular board um, time. So, um, what's it? Next Wednesday. Is that, is that calling a special meeting? Do I have to do some kind of special I'm going to put it in here in case any of them go. Okay. Not that they will at 7 a.m. The, we do progress into Excuse the me. next stage. Yeah. I will provide breakfast. I will provide coffee. I will provide <laughs> breakfast you want. I <laughs> she, she's grabbing a blank for Bob Dole. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you just leave your leftovers there for yeah. Bob Dole. Yeah. Did you know Bob Dole was going to I did, and I went that. to the one in Newton a couple weeks ago, not realizing his next trip to Kansas would be so soon. He's got about three I interned for him when there. I was in college. That was kind of the beginning of my work in ag policy and everything. It was one of those really impactful experiences to me, so I'm excited to see <laughs> Do we need to put that, I mean, can two of us even go to that? Area? What? The don't play? No, they don't go to that. You can all go if we put it in here that you're all going. So, so at least two of you will go? I'll try. I'll, I'll try to go. I like be interested in what he has to say. Super. Um, so we have the authorization from the state, which gives us the ability, but not the obligation, to move forward with farming support. But this will be a way that you can ask questions about, um, you know, just options and how we might go about it, and you know, whatever kind of questions you might have. If, would you take the second step? Um, I am continuing to have discussions with the company that I that I felt might be that anchor tenant, and I think things are continuing to progress as we hope. You know, they're doing their due diligence with their investors and the railroad, but um, I've looked into things that we might be able to do in conjunction with that, like the Economic Development Administration has grants that are pretty, in some cases, pretty good scale, um, one or two million dollars. And if I were able to make an, an application showing that that private investment leveraged whatever application we make to the EDA, I would like to think we could really get in maybe and, and start some infrastructure without a whole lot of taxpayer cost. But, you know, we have to have the right bucket mm -hmm. to, to do all that with, and so, um, and you'll, I'll need your help in doing all that. So, I, I really want to get a few can. So. so that's June the 11th agenda. June the 11th. 
I knew what I meant. I know. I'm still on uh, <laughs> I just said that. Just in my mind. He was looking at my notes. No. So I get them by nine. <laughs> How long do your board meetings usually last? We try to get them done within an hour. Okay. All right. People start getting antsy after an hour. <laughs> okay. Thank you. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Carl. How are we doing? Good. Good. Show you guys something here. You want to plug it in? Or you have nope. enough battery? I got I'm good. I'll try to work this back for you. I'm kind of a mouse person. That's a pretty fancy mouse. Fancy house. You like that? <laughs> <laughs> you won't get perfect. That was, well, it's funny you say that because we had two of them when I got here. And now you just have one? No, we still have two. But they had them because of carpal tunnel back then. They used to have gel pads and everything. You know, everything was for just safety yeah. first here to court. That's right. You don't pay work That's right. I'm pretty advanced. And bicycles for the jam piercing. Gel pads. Yeah. Um, I'm going to try to cover a couple things real quick here. And, uh, first of all, I want to let you guys know uh, we're going to start the 17% that's going out and remeasuring and, and visually putting a strap on it and, and seeing if we're catching any errors, this, that, and the other. I want to let you guys know where we're at. Uh, we're going to be in North Seward Township, uh, Douglas Township, the City of Seward, and the whole City of Stafford. We don't have too many rules. And then we're where those, those badges you know, that, that they made and so forth. And of course, we'll be employed for so Everybody can follow up behind the same with the county and everything like that. So that's where we're going to be at. Um, I was going to ask, I guess I'm going to kind of request to, uh, to maybe we could look into having a department head meeting quarterly or, or just like that. Oh, you did? No, not quarterly, but or one. Okay. Okay. I would just like to maybe, because you guys sometimes have information that we we should we would like to know, and then in turn I would like to have some, you know. The one thing I'm going to talk to you guys about is is probably something that I need to either do at a department meeting or go to each department because it's pretty cool. So, but I just I just think that'd be pretty nice. But anyway, well, don't we do that on the 11th too? Oh, okay. <laughs> Seven, eight, or six. <laughs> I mean, probably early in the morning would be good. I mean, that that maybe get Phil here and you know some of the guys before they head out. <laughs> Not all of the departments would agree with. You. Right, oh. I I would, but there are okay. some that I'd be for. it's a struggle to get here at eight. I'd be for it. Some are a struggle to get here by eight thirty sometimes. Well, that's true. So. Just wanted to throw that out there. I would like a breakfast. We could do a new And then what I was was going to do, and I don't know which I need. Well, I, I probably need to do. Well, I'm going to go with the budget, but I want to talk about employees too to explain the budget. So do you want to talk about the employees first, and then go into the budget? Because I think because I think when you see this, you're going to say your first question is going to be why. <laughs> So if we do that first, then we come out and maybe just talk about just the budget. Do we want to do that? That's fine. And so I probably to explain it. I probably need. Well, it depends how excited you are about it. Uh, Ten, fifteen minutes. Exactly. Exactly. Oh. And then come out. Then the budget actually won't take very long. Yeah. On that. I'll make most. We got an executive session for fifteen minutes. And second on the personnel. I'll second that motion. Okay, we have a motion and a second to go into executive session for now. I left personnel with uh, Carl, Nita, and motion. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion three. It'll always be uh, highlighted what parcel we're talking about. Mm -hmm. Now, see, this is what I'm talking about when we had to do the center lines, and everything had to be clean before this even could go and work. Um, what's nice about this is if I want to say I'm out in the field and I'm, and I'm out here now or in the office 
and we can zoom that back a little bit. And I'm over here, and I th and there's a center pivot here. Before I had no way of knowing if we had actually had that or didn't have it, or what have you. I can come down here now, pull that. I can go from your parcel to that parcel, get my quick ref number, go back and look and look live to see if it has irrigation or if it, or if it doesn't. Same way for a building. You know, same way, and it goes, once again, we was talking about if you go both ways, same way if a building's torn down, you can kind of see where somebody might have dove something, instead of trying to remember that in my head or calling the office and say, I need to know what happened on this parcel, I can zoom out and I can go find that on the aerial, pull that parcel up myself, and look at it by myself. When we do zoning now for this, we can zoom out and we can do a 200 foot radius in town for people in town, or we can do a 1,000 foot radius out in the rural for zoning, boom, just like that. We had a person come in uh, for the towers, actually pretty close to St. John. Uh, it took a little while to get the information they wanted, uh, but what's kind of nice about this now, And what we can do, if I go here, what I can do is I can go highlight these here. Watch this box over here. It's going to go from one to four. It'll highlight all four of those. I can pull up and see exactly and give that information just like that. If we have a tornado problem, as you can see, this is a big, big step for Stafford County if people use it. That's why now you can see why I would like other departments mm -hmm. to use Orion. You can get in there, they can look up names, value, they can look things up. It's just a lot more information. Um, you can go in town um, and see when you leave, I can go over the whole county, I can pull up five or six different parcels, but when I come back out, I'm back at your parcel where I started because I might have not have been done mm -hmm. with it. It won't leave. It'll memory. It'll record where I was at on there. If we pull up something in town, uh, which is nice. Um, if this is going to be slow. What it will do is, I don't know if you guys have been on um, uh, satellite views where you can go down and you can actually visually walk around the town oh. with that, with the satellite from the view and so forth. Um, I don't know if I pulled up one in town. But this here now, this map link, and when we go through the state, when we've got our information in, um, let's see if that works. You can go to map. See, it'll go right to that parcel. It'll be highlighted on there. There we go. And if we go mount that little circle up there. Mm -hmm. Which this will come in handy. Uh, for me, it will jump to the satellite vision then, and I can, I, we can visit with that house. So that is linked with this also. And that's just one that, that, this is why I wouldn't mind instead of having a parcel search, that would help because people could go in and, you know, look at a house, if a house is for sale, if they want to move to St. John or Stafford or wherever. Uh, um, it, it would just be a good service instead of having that parcel search with the dollar amount. So, I'm really happy with it. So the fire department, the EMS could use this and do the overlay. What, and well, what they would do is is to get the photography in here, they can't just put their photos in there. We would have to get it to Maryland or they would have to if they wanted to do something. And then we have to ship it to Topeka, Department of Revenue, and then they rectify it and they make sure there's, that it is clean and then they download the photo. Now they can get in here and look at our stuff. Our, our photography and so forth. Now, if we ever get new photo 
new photo photography, then once we get it rectified, get the center lines lined up with our, our curvature of the earth, then we are send that to DASC in, in uh, Topeka. They're, they're review it and then they're download it. What did that guy want with the towers? To put them on the tower up. Did you say where? I was pretty close. <laughs> <laughs> I heard from that guy one time and did he's you? never visited with me again. Really? He changed his mind. What do you mean? I didn't, I didn't even talk to him. I didn't even talk to him. <laughs> on there, on there, simply by clicking that little tab. Was right. this a, uh, yeah. was was a generator tower or no, cell tower? No. Talk to me once, I said, call me again. I wasn't there that day that he was out here looking. He's never contacted me. I thought maybe he gave up on the idea. So are we still on a 180 day delay up at mm -hmm. 140 yeah. Street? Yeah. There was actually somebody in the office last week on the, uh, something's going on because the, uh, if you notice the Hudson wind isn't up either. And they was actually in the, uh, this week uh, looking at some stuff. So I don't know if somebody got involved that after all didn't like that. So, getting back, well, thanks for spending time with us here. I'm glad I came back up. So, is this real time or this is all from photos? Okay, uh, this here is from photos. But on your. The Orion, this here is live. The advantage of having that, and you guys remember when we, when I, when we, I requested to do this, the advantage on this to where either, even the big counties they use tablets. Because, you know, we might all be in here data collectors and we might be going out to different parts of the county or the city. And, but the disadvantage of having on tablets is, is when you bring, you download your information that morning on your tablet, you go out and do your, your magic, you come back in and download your tablet. What's going, what's going on in the big counties is, say you're out making some changes in an area of the county, the taxpayer comes in, they review and update some things, so the person in the office made some changes, you come back in and download over the top of it again. Um, you have too many different things going on and people coming into the office that's live. This here is live, so if I make a change and I'm sitting out at Radium or wherever, it's, it's live. That's why I wanted to go this route. We're actually the only county in the state that's live. Mm -hmm. Nobody else is, well, except the old world and the <laughs> But we're the only we're the only one that's going live with this, uh, and that's why I use this little device here, the the portable Wi-Fi, and Stafford County until they build that tower. I do lose it out that way. Uh, I mean, you have to, you do lose it in a certain certain places, just like you would your phone. Right on yeah. But that will get better only in the future. You know. On there. So on the budget then, if we look at the um, uh, last year's and this year's, I have three years on there. Um, the salaries range would go up, and I did a percent. That's 5.6 percent, which I think is it isn't it isn't bad for what we're for what's going on. Uh, uh, the next thing, the if we go down to commodities, I put over there in the blue. Really, just the reason those two went up. Is, uh, is just the, the cost. I think we were a little short on the fuel last year, but it took a jump before we, you know, when we did the budget, and then we were a little short there. Uh, everything else stayed about the same. Uh, the one that went down is the, the meetings and travel expenses. Um, the state actually lowered the prices on some courses and so forth, and, uh, and then also Pawnee is due to pay a couple more classes this year than Stafford is. Uh, so that stuff went down. Uh, one thing that I went up, if we go on down, the other thing else, uh, the uh, Orion expenditures under the capital outlay over to the right, I have a blue 10 cents per parcel. That was that one thing where the state sends us a bill every year to main, to update certain things. In the past, I haven't, I, I, we haven't paid the whole thing, we paid half. 
reason being is the changes they were making was for pretty much the larger counties that we didn't care about. Now that all the counties are on Orion, and a lot of the counties out west now, the smaller counties are speaking out, now they're, now we're getting changes. The changes that we requested that help the small counties, they're making now. So I did feel that it was worth probably paying the, the full 10 cents a parcel, what have you there. Oh, so even with the changes that we talked about in the executive session and so forth, um, you know, one thing, I guess I'm going I'm to answer your question also is, the other thing is to make this happen to keep this percent lower, I'm, I'm going to request that I stay the same. Which so mine would make quite a bit of the difference if I would request that mine, my salary stay the same. So if I'm willing to eat, my, eat that part, I, I hope you guys can see how serious, it is, how serious it is. And if anybody else wants to do that, that's fine. <laughs> you know, in, in another... Well, I mean, so, and a frustrating part of, for me, for me, I don't know for Kurt, but being second year, you know, it, it's not my fault in this position that these salaries weren't addressed 15 years ago or 10 years ago or, you know, that's a frustrating side of from my frustration earlier. Mm -hmm. um, so, and that's why this, this this salary range and step increase deals that we have in place, that's why, you know, and I've voiced my opinion about this before, that I don't agree with the pay scale we have. I've talked to every, every department head about this. I just don't like it. <laughs> you know, but I don't have the answer. Like I said earlier, I don't have the answer for what should replace this. Uh, so, Shane, what if what if each department what if each department say you want to get away with this, research their own market across the state, and 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 I say and I'm just going to speak for the president. What if I came up for a low range to a high range for for this for for each both employees, and then show you where they're at, and then. Say they go from a low range to say fourteen fifty. Let's just use the right. fifteen dollars an hour to twenty dollars an hour, and then I have to stay within that parameters that I set because that's what the market did. Well, I, I'm, I, it's fair. You know, and that's all I, I'm trying to be is fair with 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 anybody's salary. Sure, my own employees. Sure, you know, but I, it just. This, this, you know, this whole pay scale's been based off of how many years the employees have been here. Well, if that's the case, then every year every employee should get a step increase. Mm -hmm. And from what you're telling me, that ain't, hasn't happened in your office. No. So, I would agree with that, but I don't have the answer for a new pay scale. You know, Nita's, we talked about this. Mm -hmm. You know, I would rather be something like that because it's fair for everybody involved. It's fair for the taxpayers that's put, put in the bill. You know, mm -hmm. that's that's fair. I would I would agree with that. That would, that would be good information to have. And it would be because we don't know what those, you know, like in the treasurer's office, we don't know what those other counties are paying those employees to do that job. And the same with the road and bridge. You know, we don't know. Mm -hmm. I would agree with you on that. You know, a, a, a low to a high and somewhere in between or, or based off of what they do in, in each <clears throat> specific office and each job description, that'd be great, you know, to, to get a, a feel for what that mm -hmm. position should pay. Maybe that's something we can look in, talk about. The yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Either early in the morning or at lunch. And, give us <laughs> and you know, give us a deadline. Say, say, Carl, you have, you have till... January 1st to get this information together you need to bring it in and we'll all meet again mm -hmm. and, and, and but you need to document where you got the low and you need to document right. where you got the high right and it can't the high can't be in in Topeka or Wichita <laughs> yeah. and the Some low you know yeah. right yeah. Yeah. it has to be it has nice. to be fair you know even the listing of, like you said, several counties have a GIS coordinator. Mm -hmm. you know, you'd have to have a little description of what job description with it. Right? You know I do that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah, so, I mean, whatever is fair, but I mean, but the, the way the foundation set, it's just, well, and, it's difficult. You know, and our, our difficulty is, uh, on these step increases, well, it's, in, it's, it's new year, they've been here a year, they get an automatic step increase, you know, and so they, I don't mean this responsibility has gotten right. right. That's true. And that's why I try to put this here on the, I try to give you guys a good recommendation why, because I don't do this very often. Uh, yeah, I mean, you got very good points in there. I mean, that's. You did a good job of describing what they're, or telling us what they're doing and their responsibilities. Um, I don't know if, how this works now. Do we, since this isn't until January 1st, do we talk about it, or do you guys? Do you just want to think about it, and then do we? Do I come back, or or if you say yeah, now that'd be great too. But or is that, or will that come in when you when you approve the budget? I mean, if the budget's approved, where it is is. I mean, we'll have to do the motions though. If we do, it rings. Still have to come back into the paperwork. Yeah. But You're going to either approve his budget as presented or cut it or whatever. And that has to be done by ASAP. Oh. Because, because, but I, I mean, by when? Yeah, when we June, did this. The end of June. Okay. Because you have to send it to the auditor and come back. The auditors have to go through it. Right? You got published for what, three weeks in the paper? We'll have the values by then. We're actually, yeah, we're, we're actually certifying today. Like I said, you know. Merma certifying her part without my assistance. Mm -hmm. Don certifying him. You know, this is the beginning of the budget. This is this is where it starts. Is right here with the. If we screw up, your budgets are wrong. Don't screw up. Well, we don't plan on it. That's yeah. why we had press. That's a that's a big load. Correct. Right. On, on a personal. It is. Well, we'll have to make a decision by the end of June. Okay. As far as the budget, yes. Uh, that's more than fair. I understand. Why I'm asking for 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 quite a bit, but I'm I'm, I'm trying to explain why though. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, and then we'll talk later, and then I yeah. if we'll go from there. Okay. Do you guys have anything for me then? Not that I can think of. Okay. All right. Thank you. Very Thanks good. a lot. Yeah. Thank you. Is that Robert Mitchell? Yeah, I think it's. There's somebody out there. Robert? Hey. I think there's a triple so. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. morning. I'm sorry I'm late. I'm glad somebody had somebody else here. <laughs> <laughs> We're late too. We've been busy. <laughs> I'm sure you have been. Um, well, you folks know why I'm here and come down to give you our yearly report on what we did last year and so far what we're looking like this year and then visit with you about our funding. We're not going to ask for anything more um, than we have for the last three years. It's still the 6394. We're hoping that next year's um, will decrease because we've had another county approach us. Um, and if they join our coalition, they'll knock down the other six counties. Um, you know, so there's there six now? Yeah, there's six counties now. We have Stafford, Edwards, Pawnee, Rush, Ness, and Russell counties. So those are the that are in our, our coalition now or in our group now. Um, so if we get this seventh county in, then it should drop down the you know the fees tremendously. We're hoping we should know. We, they they approached us about two months ago. We sent them our proposal, and I think they're waiting to see how their budget goes. Um, um, See if they're going to accept our proposal or not. So, um, just a, for Stafford County for 2013, we issued and completed 12 septic systems, uh, 53 water wells. We did 49 water tests and then nine lender evaluations throughout the county, um, which totaled 1,170 hours. Now, the hours are come up. I guess years ago, before I started, they had a formula that all the commissioners voted on and that's what they mm -hmm. that's how they came up with the hours and we have that at the office there so um, that's how we come up with the hours for 2013 so 
we had one county ask us this year on how much time we were spending there and what, what they were paying. Mm -hmm. It works out to be about $5.50 an hour for Stafford County uh, with the time that we're spending here. So, um, on that. And we're not too far off. I mean, we're halfway through the year now. These numbers here are as of last Friday. Um, and before I leave Stafford County today, that septic system will be at 10. Um, we're on our way over to Maxville to do a final inspection here on my way back through. So um, we're at 25 water wells, 9 <coughs> water tests, and then right as of right now, three lender evaluations. So that's kind of where we are with the year. Yeah. Hope to <coughs> water, keep it going. Water tests, guys, just call you up for office. Yes board. and no. Um, we, we water test, we try to water test all of our wells that are drilled. Um, yeah. Now, new ones. the new ones. And the reason we do that, we check in for nitrates and bacteria, especially nitrate level here in Stafford County. Um, and we've got records of those. And then we do water tests for people who will call and do for cattle, livestock, and then daycare facilities, um, foster parents. They have to do that on a yearly basis. Um, they keep their license and, and all that on there. So when we do that for them. Now for the daycare and fostering, we come out, grab the sample, and we send those off either to Servite, um, and they do that because they ask. Now for the nitrates and bacteria, we do those out of our office. We've got the facility to do there, the equipment to do those. So we can do those at any time. But when they start checking for you know, some of the other metals and things like that, we can't check there. So we send those into Servite. And then also all lender evaluations. So anytime there's a lender evaluation, you know, we check for the water on that to make sure it's safe for human consumption on those parts. So, so those are our numbers for the year, and do you have any questions? <laughs> so with household water wells, just get a kit from Servitec and Well now we could do that. I mean if we can come down and do the do the the for just for nitrates and bacteria. Um, we can check for nitrates and bacteria. We've got kits at our office, we'll come down, grab a sample, take it back up, and within forty eight hours you'll have your results on those. Um, now if you want anything for salt or hardness or anything to that effect, then we have to send that into Servitec. Servitex, their rates are between seventy five and hundred and twenty five, depending on how many tests you went done on it. For ours to do our nitrates and bacteria it's a forty dollar charge. Um, and we can't, you know, sometimes we don't get to it right away because we try to squeeze that into when we're doing inspections or something in the area and we'll grab it and go that route. So. Should they be done or yearly or? Well, no. I mean, every five years? Yeah, I'd say probably every three to five years on that. Now, if you're starting to see now here in Stafford County with the nitrates being so high, you know, there's some things that we can do with that. now. We've been getting a lot of tests done in Stafford County just for that reason. I guess the word's getting out, nitrates are here high. And so a lot of folks are starting to put in their RO systems and you know, trying to get, get that cleared up. So. Well, I, you know, it's like that day down in Wichita, I guess there's an area where people have been using wells and it's all contaminated, so now the city's got to put in water supplies and stuff like Tyler and Central and that's <coughs> two dry cleaning companies no. so no we don't like I say we haven't we're just doing what well, we do it for the home then we get we get asked quite a bit to do it mm -hmm. uh, and then, like I say the daycares and foster parents they have to do they're required to do right. it every year right. so uh, on that part is bleach down a well helping it does a little bit. I mean, you can, you can, it'll clean up that bacteria a little bit. Um, what we're seeing, the well drillers have been using a, I call it like a shock treatment. I mean, for like a pool, it's similar to that, but they're in little pellets. Um, we don't like to see them using the bleach too much, because if you use the bleach and you don't get it past, the galvanized going down there, it will corrode it and it will cause problems for you. That bleach will eat that away for you. So what they've done is we've seen some of them make like a, a six six foot you know, 
three quarter inch pipe with a funnel on top so it gets past all the galvanized and they'll pour a little bit in that way. So, but if you use that dry chemical a shock out of a you know pool supply, just use a little bit in there and that'll clean that up as well. But since it's dry it won't it won't attach to that galvanized on there. A lot more expensive than bleach. Well it is but <laughs> I guess repairing a you know, your of your pump. Yeah, repair of a pump or So but any other questions? Yeah, I know you guys are busy, so I'm not trying to rush. <laughs> <laughs> I mean I could sit here all day, it's cool in here. So. <laughs> yeah, it's been a little warm. No, in fact you've got ten minutes. <laughs> oh. <laughs> But if there's anything else, I mean, any questions? And and um, Harry Stites is still our board member for the for the county here, representing the county here. So, and next board meeting's next Tuesday. So, okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 it seems like next week's going to be a busy week. Yeah. <laughs> So on your uh, septic systems, you do the perk tests, and, and I'm, I'm recalling what I did 12 years ago. Well, we're almost getting away from the perk test now. Um, what we're doing is more of a soil survey, and we're having, if it's under a new construction, what I do is I have, I just wait till the basement's being dug, and trying to save the homeowner money out there. If not, then we have to go out and they'll dig a, it's two foot wide, four foot deep, six foot long. And we'll go out and do a soil survey. So we'll grab some soil samples out of that and mix it with our water and see how, see how it's gonna absorb the water. And then, so we're doing a lot of it that way now, um, on that part. Now we still do the, you know, the perk test, but in most cases, if it's a new home, and, and that's what I'm seeing, you got, you, there's, you guys have several new homes going in on in the area. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so I'm waiting for them to dig their basement or their footing while the equipment's out there, and we'll go out and do that soil sample there. So it's a lot different than it was 20 years ago because I think our soil books also help us out more now than, than you know, what, what they knew about 20 years ago in the area. Yeah, because that was a lot of fun. Dig, you know, digging 12 holes four feet apart in the <laughs> grid and putting gravel in the bottom and then running around and dumping water dumping and, water and then measuring every, what, 30 minutes, and 30 minutes, hour. and then an hour, and then two hours, and then, yeah, that was, <laughs> that was a lot of fun. <laughs> so, but now that's, so we're just doing more of a soil survey, okay. you know, and we're opening up a bigger area, so, but it seems to be working better, I mean, than the perk test. That's how, you know, like I say, there's still, now if it's an existing home, then we'll go out, we can pull the old records and see how it perked, and if, mm -hmm. if we have to do a new perk test where the, you know, new system's going to go or the new laterals are going to go, then we'll do those. But I'm like you, I don't like doing perk yeah. tests. So they're still recommending chambers yeah. Yeah. as opposed to perk We're still pipe. doing, we're still doing chambers. We're, we're actually putting in some rock and pipe now. Um, the one out here by Maxville, we're actually putting here, it's for a shed. Um, that we're putting in a rock and pipe because he's going to have a lot of heavy equipment running over it. And, you know, it's going to be off his driveway, but I know how my kids are when they pull in the driveway and there's something in the way that it's going to pull off into the pasture there. So we're going to do, we're doing rock and pipe out there on that one. Now the chambers give us a 20% reduction. So, you know, before if we had to put in 300 feet of rock and pipe, we could put in that 200 and, you know, 80, 270 feet of the rock and pipe, or the ladder, or the chambers. Mm -hmm. So, so we're starting to see that now. There's some new stuff coming out that once we get more information on, I'll need to, we'll visit again and see does that have to be approved by the commissioners before we can allow it. But they're a three chamber tank. Um, right now we have the two chambers, but it's a three chamber tank with an aerator in it. A pump. By the time it hits that third chamber, they claim the water is almost drinkable, but I can't get a sales rep to test it. For me. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, but what they're doing with that now is they're pumping that out. It's, they're actually letting, the state's actually allowing them to use it for irrigation now. So if they want to water their grass, you know, they can do that with it. Anything that's not consumed by humans, they can, they'll let you irrigate it. So. That's what they supposedly can do up here at the sewer ponds too, right? You know, well, yeah. That third, third pond? That third pond? By the time they get it up, they say it's That's what they say. I'm not going to try it. <laughs> I'm not going to try it. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not even going to eat the catfish that they put in. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. No, there's a lot of parks and golf courses and stuff that are using They're doing it. Well, these new systems that they're saying, they said they'll actually, they'll actually clean up between 600 to 1,500 gallons a day. For, for usage, so you can do it. I think what the state was looking at was they're looking at, I mean, we're in the drought, they can get any type of water usage out of anything and, you know, let them use it. But, well, thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Don't work too hard. Okay. <laughs> Have a good day. You too. We've got two tax mm -hmm. rolls. Uh -huh. Make a motion that you uh, Set these two tax roll corrections. I second that. Here we have a motion and a second to accept the two new tax roll corrections. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried. Thank you, motion with the approval of that. We'll make 28. Second. Here we have a motion and a second to approve the minutes from the meeting of May 28th. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried. some of the differences that you may be seeing across the board with some of the different quotes that uh, that will probably be coming across the table so that you guys can make an educated decision on that and, and uh, be here for any questions that you may have. So I guess to get started here I've got um, some drawings or aerial um, images of each of the locations. We'll kind of go over those here first to uh, make sure that we've got the areas of concern uh, covered and then I can go through the actual solution for, um, for the proposal. Um, this would be the courthouse um, location. So the building uh, sits roughly like this. Um, I've got uh, two cameras across the front of the building looking back across each other to catch uh, a couple different views. So if you have somebody coming in from the north side up to the front doors, you have that facial view of, of the coverage there um, coming up and watching the walkways. On the west side, I have a camera here uh, covering the sidewalk area and the walkway up to the west door. On the south side of the building, I have a camera to provide coverage for uh, the parking area and alleyway to uh, this uh, storage building. On the north side, um, inside of the walk-in door, uh, coming into like where the sheriff's office is, um, the sheriff said that that door is unlocked um, 24 hours a day, so he wanted to have some coverage on that particular door to monitor traffic in and out. On the annex building here, to, on the east side of the courthouse, um, we will be looking at one here on the north side of the uh, facility monitoring the front entrance walkway up to the building. 
uh, on the back side. Um, again, watching the uh, walk-in doors that are on the back side, as well as just the general parking areas and traffic coming in. Um, we'll be having coverage on the back side of this, um, of this storage building. And then we'll also use the corner of this building to monitor the back side of the courthouse mm -hmm. um, so that you have a, a view back in towards that area. Um, this particular building, um, or this setup, will run or operate off of one system and we'll link these buildings together via a wireless bridge. Um, so all of these cameras will be using one video server and we'll get into that a little bit later on the differences between those. Um, the next one here is the EMS uh, facility location. Um, areas uh, that I noted of um, concern are going to be the um, storage, um, the building where the fire trucks are stored at, looking across these bay doors. Um, third camera here on the west side of this building looking back across parking areas here and the walk-in door on the west side of the building. And then a camera here on the back side uh, to watch the EMS ambulance space. Uh, and we can cheat this one a little bit further to the east to get it a little bit closer to that focal area, or we can pull it back to have that broad overall coverage and use a little bit more of the angle of the lens if you're wanting more coverage area there. So, this mounting location could be uh, moved a little bit further to the east, closer to the of Bay doors, if you want a more specific view of that. Um, this facility does have a security system quote to go along with it. I'll probably uh, tie that in at the end. Um, that will probably be the, the easiest ones to go over on the security side of it. Did you have one to cover the, the north door of the EMS building? There's a walk-in door. I have a uh, security alarm contact on that door. Oh, okay. Um, so if somebody is trying to get into that facility, uh, we've got that covered with the alarm side of okay. it. Um, we can certainly expand it if you want to have video coverage on that door as well. I'm not sure. Which, which door do they normally go into? The back one. The this one here. Really? And it's cave entry. Yeah, like, I don't think you can walk into either one of them here. Mm -hmm. Right. Probably can't, can't just walk into either one of them. I don't believe it. I know the day that uh, we did look at the facility, uh, we had to make a phone call or knock uh, to get in. Uh, I've it. always been asked to get into either side. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Questions or concerns? No. Next one would be the um, health services facility. Mm -hmm. um, the two areas of concern here for video were the front door entrance to monitor activity coming in, and then the back employee entrance or the back door on the south side that the employees use uh, generally coming and going. Um, so there was a couple of different approaches here. Um, originally, uh, Jeff maybe thought maybe we might look at something on the outside of this building. Um, and I had the recommendation of looking at something on the inside of those doors because we could use an indoor uh, rated camera versus an outdoor rated camera. And another um, aspect of that is the soffit levels on that building are so much lower that somebody could come up and tamper with mm -hmm. the model. And in order to safeguard against that, you have to have another camera on the back side of it protecting that angle from somebody coming from the back corner uh, to get to that camera. So. We could do a fewer number of cameras by monitoring the walk-in entry doors on the inside. Uh, this facility also does have an alarm system quote to go along with it, and that's going to be monitoring front door, back door, and then there is a exterior attic entry door on the west side of this building where they use for maintenance um, to get to the air conditioner units. I believe are, are located up there. So I did put a contact on that exterior. Door. And then we have some interior motion detectors to uh, safeguard against your uh, medical um, or medication mm -hmm. storage uh, cabinets throughout that facility. Okay. Questions or concerns on that one? Alright, the next one is the uh, road and bridge 
department over by the elevator. Uh, facility sits uh, like this, so we have a total of three cameras providing coverage here. So this would be uh, monitoring across the overhead door, on the door, and the driveway into the facility. Uh, same concept here on the south side, monitoring this intersection and traffic coming into uh, the south side into the facility. On the west side of the building, we'll locate one here, looking back across your overhead doors, and there's a walk-in door here as well. Um, so you'll see traffic, um, if somebody's coming in here, you can catch that. We'll be catching a good broad overall view towards your uh, fuel tanks as well. How much of that area back there can you see? Yeah. Um, you're going to be close to a 90 degree angle, so uh, we'll be covering a building edge and straight west, straight west. Um, and sometimes we will uh, cheat this this left angle out a few degrees from the edge of the building um, and so that gains you just a, you know a couple more degrees over here to give you a little bit more angle so uh, when viewing cameras it'll, you'll be able to see just as far as you can with your naked eye what becomes important is the resolution within that image or the pixels um, because when you start looking at these areas out here, the lower the resolution, this may just be one pixel. So as you start to enlarge that mm -hmm. image, it's not as detail oriented. So it's just going to become as a, a, a pixel within it, within that image that's blurry. What I have here is a higher resolution camera to assist with the more detail here at the fuel tank area. So for general detection of somebody tampering with something out here, you'll definitely have that. Now having detailed uh, identification out here at this distance of a couple hundred feet, we are going to, you know, the camera is going to be difficult to do that, especially at night. I do have infrared or IR built into this camera so um, that you do have that detail in your low light conditions. Um, but you will have detection out here this area and just not identification. I just wonder how important is that one versus shooting back there. I mean, there are a couple of doors here on the on the south side of this building. Well, you don't see who's driving in and out. I mean, that's I don't know. Could you come in either way? Yes. Right. Most people I know come in that way. Don't but you know, you can, uh, there's a lot of a lot of stuff back in here is what I was thinking. Yeah, we could definitely look at um, either if you decide that this isn't you know a concern. I, I'd say that if somebody we're going to be coming in for our tools. You know, uh, we want to be monitoring those doors mm -hmm. as well um, in that hand shop bay things out here uh, are probably going to be larger type items that are going to require a vehicle to um, well, just see take coming in now. You will, you know. you will, yeah. And this one will at least show you where they went. Yeah. And then you'll see where they, at least somebody stopped or... You might not see them back there if they're picking it up, but you can at least see them who was going in the right. Yeah. During the daytime, um, I'll, I'll show you guys some demos. Uh, so that you kind of see what resolution I have there and what kind of detail you have. Um, the next location is um, the Wien Department out south of town. This building here, um, the one that Jeff uh, indicated was of concern was this west building here. Um, which there is a door here on the south side and then there's one on the east side of this building. Um, there are some windows on the back side of this, but they are barred up um, pretty decent, so I don't know that anybody's going to be getting in through that window area. Um, so I do have coverage on the east side and, um, and across the front, so again, you'll be catching some uh, broad overall uh, traffic in This is probably the most challenging one just because, um, you know, it's out there in the middle of nowhere where, you know,
know, somebody could come in, park, walk into the area, um, and maybe not uh, drive a vehicle or have that vehicle description. Another um, concern that I have a little bit with this location, I think I've done a couple things to help us out with that, is, you know, somebody may have more time here where they can go and find that recorder unit and take off with the entire unit. So what I've done on this location is I've built in um, SD cards um, for storage, short-term storage, um, on the cameras as well. So if somebody takes off with that recorder unit mm -hmm. or does get into this building, take off with the recorder unit, um, then uh, we do have it backed up on those SD cards uh, within the cameras. So I've um, done a couple things there to help try to safeguard that. Um, Another downside to this facility is it does not have any existing uh, internet located. Um, so if you're wanting to remote view this location, um, you're either going to have to look at activating internet service or whoever is the department head of this. If something is noticed that looks suspicious, then we need to come out, pull that video footage off of there, um, and get that um, taken off uh, of your server um, right away so that that way um, you can something with it. Um, so remote viewing at this site is going to be a challenge unless we activate the internet connection. <coughs> Questions, concerns, comments? All right. Um, so now that we've talked about um, the locations, any other areas that you felt that you guys had in mind or had concerns with that we didn't have covered? I think that's pretty good. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, so this is going to be a um, proposal for the um, for the surveillance uh, piece of it. On the first page on the inside there, you will see um, some recommendations um, that we look to uh, put out to our customers. So when you're trying to be a little bit educational here on, on a few things to, to look at. So um, what we're trying to do is uh, provide you guys with the ability to monitor your locations and facilities uh, with an IP-based data surveillance system. So uh, that would probably be one of your key uh, factors that you'll be seeing across the board on your other quotes is uh, I'm pretty sure some of the competitors are going to be looking at uh, analog-based systems. And so I want to take a few minutes to talk about the difference between analog and IP-based cameras. So an analog-based system, and this is technology that's 50, 60 years old, analog-based systems are going to be working off of a coax cable. So uh, you may be uh, familiar with that as the old black coax cable that uh, supplies TV um, service in the past. Um, uh, so with those, um, the video stream that's coming from the camera uh, to that recorder is the video stream you get. Um, and it is limited, the resolution of that is limited by the standards of that cable. So when we're comparing an analog camera to an IP based, you're roughly between a 0.3 and a 0.4 megapixel uh, resolution. Everything that I'm going to be quoting is a 1.3 up to a 5 megapixel camera. So we're looking at resolution levels that are 4 to 20 times greater than the analog resolution camera. Along with that comes uh, additional cost. So if we're basing the quote, uh, the proposal and the decision solely based on price, I will tell you that I'm not going to win that and I'll be the first one to admit that. Um, but if you're looking for a quality solution, that resolution level that you can do something with, then I really feel that the IP solution is the route to look at and to consider based on those resolution levels. So uh, with an analog type system, you're going to be looking at that coax line. You're either going to have to be looking at a electrician to supply a power outlet at the mounting location of the camera, or you look at a separate power wire um, and a power supply unit to, to power those cameras. On the IP side of it, we can use a Cat5 or a Cat6 network cable, so something that you're familiar with, plugging in from your internet router to uh, your computer. That's how we supply the video feed across the network, and we can power it with the power over Ethernet network switch. 
So it's all low voltage. We, we can supply that power to that camera over that same cable. Um, so that would be one uh, key significant difference uh, in that. Another uh, key difference is going to be the scalability of the systems. So on the analog side of it, you're typically looking at a DVR unit. That you, up front, you have to choose a 4-channel, an 8-channel, a 16-channel DVR as storage built into it. So if you choose an 8-channel DVR unit and you have 8 cameras on it, and you want to add a camera down the road, you're either looking at ditching your original DVR unit and replacing with a larger unit, or you're stacking another one on top of it. And I'll show you some differences in that uh, when you're looking at uh, being the client and, and viewing those cameras. So each one of those would potentially have an IP address, and you're having to manage multiple IP addresses for your DVR units. On the IP side of it, it scales very well from one to hundreds. So you know we have the single camera applications. We also have hospitals or medical type facilities that have 30, 40, 50 cameras on them on the IP side of it. So we can add that camera license as we need um, and, and scale the system as you need it. Um, so everything that we're going to be looking at is going to be vandal type, uh, uh, vandal proof. So somebody can't uh, go up and, and tamper with the units. So they're either going to be a dome type unit that's protecting that lens from uh, somebody moving it or adjusting it, um, or outdoor type models where everything is going to be bound up high enough that somebody can tamper with it, but it's also protected from your elements, dust, rain, wind, um, those type of environments. Um, we will be looking at a, a video management software that's going to assist you with managing your locations. So what's really nice about this is it's one client that you will log into. So if there's one person that's in charge of video, uh, the video systems, now we can have that one person be able to monitor potentially your EMS station, your courthouse, annex, health services building, and road and bridge department, all from one platform. Even though they have separate servers that are doing their storage at each site, when you log in, all of those are plugged into one video management software instead of having to log into each system individually uh, to see that. Um, so Nextech is uh, a fairly local uh, company. Uh, Nextech uh, is based out of Hayes. Uh, we have offices in Great Bend. Um, so our technicians are uh, regional here, local technicians, um, and we will put our uh, response time in writing on, on uh, we'll get to that here in a little bit, on the different uh, payment options that you have. Um, Everything is going to be certified from start to finish on installation of cabling to the installation programming and training on, on your video surveillance stuff. So the scope of work, uh, there's a total of 20 cameras throughout the facilities, and I have the device locations broken out per uh, building there. So I'll leave a copy of the uh, drawings here that have those mounting locations. So if you need to refer back to those, you can, or they're in uh, writing there. Um, Touching base on the hardware side of it, we will have a video server at each of the, um, the locations. So located in the courthouse, the EMS, health services, road and bridge, and the department. Um, but as I mentioned, uh, you can remotely log into those um, via internet connection um, to, to view those. So uh, our exterior uh, cameras are all going to be bullet type cameras, 2 megapixel, so a 1080p resolution. So you might have uh, be familiar with 1080p high definition TV um, at home. You're going to be getting that same type of resolution uh, when you're looking at your video surveillance cameras. Um, all our outdoor models will have integrated infrared or IR uh, for those lower light conditions. And in the areas that we do have uh, ambient lighting or enough ambient lighting coming off of the building structures, um, or parking lot lights, uh, there is a potential that those campers may stay in a color mode throughout the night. So it's one of those, there might be one camera at one facility that stays on all night because there's enough ambient light in there. The next one may switch over to an infrared or IR mode if needed. Questions on 
Um, so we've already done the site survey. Um, I've done the design layout. Um, these are the services that we're, we would be providing you. Um, upon approval or sign off, then we would look at uh, wiring of the surveillance system, mounting of all the equipment, um, training your staff on on how to uh, utilize the system. So, if the, like I said, if there's going to be one or two people that are in charge, or a department head of each uh, building that's going to be in charge of monitoring their video surveillance, uh, then we would do that training for, for those uh, those individuals, and then we would be there for uh, the service of all the equipment. So we'll get to an outright purchase option as well as surveillance as a service and there's some, some key differences there. So functionality is broken out there just to help you guys control your business operations costs. So if you're having um, you know, equipment or inventory that's coming up missing from your different facilities or vandalism type um, activity, um, we are, we are helping control those costs by being able to, to monitor those areas, as well as uh, helping with your liability or regulatory uh, concerns, so um, like your EMS or health services facilities that you may be regulated to monitor your, your medications or uh, those things, uh, we're helping uh, meet those, those standards. Um, we can give you the ability to do your live viewing um, as well as, as a remote playback or uh, playback after the fact. I do have some requirements and recommendations uh, listed there on the bottom of that page. Um, since Next Tech is not the internet service provider, there are a few things that we cannot guarantee, and that's the uptime of your internet, the speeds of your internet. Those would be uh, things that you would need to take up with your current internet service provider. So uh, one key thing, if you're wanting to do remote viewing, say somebody here at the courthouse log into the EMS station or the health services building, one requirement of that would be to have a static IV internet connection. And what that does, it's kind of like your physical address uh, to your house or to your business location, only that's for your internet. So that when we're here, we have a direct uh, connection to that site uh, from an outside network. Typically, that does have a monthly charge, usually $10 to $20 a month, depending on the internet service provider. And there may be some facilities that are already have that set up. So, say for instance, if health services is using a server here at the courthouse uh, for network stuff, uh, you may already have that um, static IP set up. So, you want things to, to check with your internet service provider. All right, I'm ready to flip to the page that everybody's probably anticipating, and that's the outright purchase option. Um, this would be a one-time equipment purchase, installation, setup, and training. Um, and I have the different location buildings uh, broken out. Uh, so you can see if you were to choose to do one building versus another, uh, those are broken out for you. Um, with this, you'd be covered by the manufacturer's warranty on the equipment, which is typically one year on a majority of the equipment. There'll be a couple of parts and pieces thrown in there that may have a three-year manufacturer warranty. So within that manufacturer warranty, they'll be covering the cost of the part, technician time to come out and reinstall that unit and reprogram on the system is a full time. Uh, but we are there for service after the sale. Questions on that. The next option is going to be the surveillance as a solution, surveillance as a service, name it as, as you wish. Um, this would be where Next Tech actually owns the equipment and maintains it for a 36 month or a 60 month option. So, with this option, no money is required up front. You begin your monthly payment, um, which is on the back. Um, that side of that page. So there's a 36-month option as well as a 60-month option. So you would begin paying those monthly installment payments throughout the term and say two years down the road where we may have a camera that's outside of the manufacturer warranty that uh, goes down on you, you would get on the phone and call Next Tech. We would be responsible for the technician time and the replacement of those units uh, or camera equipment, hard drives on servers, uh, those type of things would all be covered by your uh, your your monthly option. 
So here you know what your out-of-pocket expense is for the desired term, um, and, and everything is out on the table. So if you're trying to put together that budget for a period of time, now you know exactly what's coming out of your pocket. Another reason we see this to be fairly popular is, okay, if we know that um, we looked at our outright purchase number, which was 35000 and we only have $10,000 budgeted to, to use towards surveillance this year, and maybe another ten, more, and we have to look at phasing something in over a three-year period of time, it takes us three years to get a complete solution. And then we enter into that revolving wheel of constantly upgrading equipment. Once you get done with phase three, we're starting to look at maintenance on phase one that you installed, and then you start having compatibility type issues, um, you know, as technology continues to advance and change. So with the monthly option, we see this to be a fairly popular option um, if you're looking at phasing something in because we can get a complete solution at day one and you know that you're covered. At the end of that term, we can look at meeting with you and saying, okay, how your needs stay the same or how they changed across the different facilities um, and proposing a new agreement uh, to meet those changes um, as well as meet the changes in technology. So at the end of, say, a 60-month agreement, we can come back in, propose a new monthly agreement to you and replace all of the existing equipment with new equipment that keeps you up to date with the technology. Questions on that, or have any concerns with either of those options? I think that's probably something that you um, that uh, is fairly unique to Next Tech uh, in providing that monthly option, where you don't have to come up with a bunch of capital uh, expenses up front. You can look and you would own the equipment for that those months. Yes, Next Tech would own and maintain that equipment. So, for instance, uh, the facility gets hit by lightning, takes out that system, um, Next Tech is responsible for that. So we've had it happen. Yeah. 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 Okay. Any questions on that? Um, do you guys need any extra copies of this? Um, no. You got a copy? Mm -hmm. Yeah, doctors. <laughs> Nothing serious. No, no, uh, no. Okay. The next one is going to be a uh, security system uh, quote for the health services building. Commissioners who are business people. As opposed to say like retired school teachers. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll do a similar type setup here with providing you an outright purchase option for security as a service. With this system, um, the health services, I've identified in the description area uh, what we'll be providing. So we'll be providing coverage for the north door, south door, and that attic, exterior attic entry door. Um, your motion detectors will be covering the northwest exam room, which had a cabinet in there that they kept some um, like the medication over the counter type stuff, but something that you know, somebody might find uh, reason to pop a window in that room to get into uh, into that area. Um, we'll be covering the main uh, hallway which runs down the center of the building so if there is traffic coming from room to room or side to side from any other areas with windows we have that area covered. There is one uh, small room where there is a uh, medication uh, cooler. Uh, I did uh, go ahead and put one in just to have make sure that that area has has its coverage um, in that small little room, and then uh, going in the front lobby area. So we have our sys, uh, security system kit. This system will have a digital cellular communicator. So uh, instead of tying into a landline, we'll be actually calling out with a cellular signal. 
So this protects you against uh, the compromising of a phone line on the outside of the building, which I believe is important because we're starting to see that being more and more popular as people become more educated from TV shows. Um, you, know, you see that's the first thing that, uh, that you uh, want to do with the security system. So that's going to protect you against that. So uh, we will have a localized siren that would be sounding in the event that somebody does break into the location, as well as our 24-7 uh, monitor, uh, central monitoring station. So. In the event that somebody breaks in on, you know, 11 o'clock on a Friday night, that alarm signal goes out to our monitoring station. They would have a designated calling list uh, that's predefined. So each building may, or, I'm sorry, EMS versus health services may have their own predefined calling list to say, okay, we want to verify it's not a false alarm first with a specific number, and then report to county dispatch to uh, dispatch somebody to the location. You want to have some notification calls on there just to let them, somebody know that there is activity up at the location. Um, so we have that flexibility of customizing those um, as you need them. Um, so there is an outright purchase option, which would be the $1,524.63 with a two-year monitoring contract of the $34.90 per month, which is the last line item in the outright section. If you choose to do the security as a service, we have that 36 or the 60 month option. Again, here, Next Tech owns and maintains, monitors the system for that term. So if you chose a 36 month term, it would be the $93.06. So there's no cash required up front, and your monthly monitoring fee, that $34.90, is built into that, uh, that $93 or the $67.19 on the 60. Questions on that one? I know that the uh, her biological refrigerator has an alarm, has a sensor on the end that if it's malfunctioning or something, it will call her, mm -hmm. the, the health director. And I presume this one is wireless, you said. And I think it's the one on the refrigerator. Is it? It's wireless. I believe that one. I, I'm not uh, the equipment brand. I wasn't uh, familiar with. Um, so that one you need to to check in on. But um, where it was located, I believe, if I remember correctly, uh, it might have. And I would need to double check myself on this. But I think it might be tied into the internet. Have an internet communicator, so it might send the signal out via the internet. If I remember correctly, but um, instead of a phone line, it might be phone. So um, I'd be happy to go and check on that and do some more research on that if, if we need to. Um, one thing that would be uh, an option for this is they do have um, they do have temperature monitors that can be tied into this alarm system. So. If we wanted to look at a monitor that replaces the existing setup to uh, alleviate a monthly reoccurring cost mm -hmm. to you guys having two systems, we could look at putting a temperature monitor. We've done that for uh, Norton County Health Department in Norton, Kansas. Uh, we've done it for um, the medical clinic in Osborne and a couple others uh, like that. So we could look at that predefine what your temperature range is and the variation. So if it's outside of a five degree window, mm -hmm. um, then that's when it would notify you um, of that, that out of balance. Um, so we could look at that option as well. Is there, is there a monthly fee on that? On the refrigerator? Yeah. I, 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 I don't think, think so. so. I, I think, think that was included. Yeah. In, and that was you a state funded mm -hmm. thing anyway. Can. But it calls her and emails her. We could set this one up to do um, email as well. Um, so, man, I don't think it's. I don't. Think I don't think that's necessary. I think a phone call. I mean, for. 
Another thing that you can also do, and I, sorry, we can we can be here for hours yeah, talking yeah. about this. I want to hit on the key topic areas, um, but each of your individual employees could have a user code assigned to them. So at the health services building, we may need to have one. You can choose to use one master code that everybody uses, or you can assign individual user codes per individuals that need to have access to that building. And then at the end of the month, you can receive a monthly report. So if there is a fear that you know medication is walking away and it's an internal, we hope that it's not an internal uh, situation. But in that event that somebody's coming back in after hours, you can see when that code was used. So if somebody's coming in at you know Saturday night, um, office isn't open, it's not normal operation hours. We can find out why or question why that individual is coming back in and you have a way of tracking that. And then also, uh, because you use physical metal keys, and you know, if termination does, a, uh, does take place, and you don't get that key back, and somebody still has a user code, now we can go in and remove that user code. So even if the alarm system is activated, their user code, and they do have a copy of that key, and they try to come back into the facility, now that, uh, that user code is no longer active. So that would be one thing I would probably recommend there at those facilities. That's not it. Is that included in your security? Yeah, we can we can tailor that when we're doing the program. Pretty good. Um, another thing that's pretty popular, we didn't really look at it um, too much when we did the walkthrough. Um, Jeff didn't know if it, how much of a concern it would be, um, but electronic access control is becoming very popular. And instead of your physical metal keys, you have a fob or a card-like device that you present to a reader, and it's electronically saying, okay, this person does or does not have access at this given time. So you, with the click of a mouse, now you can say, okay, you know, Jim no longer has has access to the building, or Susan needs to have access or administrative rights to get into this building at all times of the day, any day of the week. And now we can give her those privileges. So, so it's like a motel, hotel. Security. Similar concept, yeah. yes. Similar concept. Um, in my opinion, a little bit more reliable. Yeah, yeah. The card type uh, structure is not a magnetic strip. And it's a uh, more of an encoded. Uh, proximity type uh, reader, um, but it is the same concept, right. preventing you from entering into somebody's unauthorized uh, through. So. All right. If you can lock out their key, you might not need that either. If you can lock out their key to where it wouldn't work, you wouldn't really necessarily need that, right? Well, it's kind of a uh, you know, one way or another. Uh, if, you're, if you're using an uh, alarm type system, they're having to enter in a code to arm or disarm that system, and you're using an access privilege with that code. Um, access control is that electronic uh, entrance to even get you into the building, so it's just a different layer. And the two together kind of do the same thing, but one or the other would be a good option to, to look at putting in place. Something is better than nothing. Which we have that need a quarter of that like. Um this one here is gonna be very similar. This is for the ES uh, EMS location. In the description area here I have the the doors that we'll be covering, so the north door, there's a south walk-in door, and then there's a west door. I believe it goes into like a conference room or a training uh, room area on the west side. We'll be covering that door, as well as the two overhead bay doors uh, for uh, the ambulance bays. So if some, for some reason that door does not get put down and somebody's trying to arm the system, uh, you'll be notified that that it won't allow you to arm the system because it'll know that that door's been propped open or something like that, or it's been left open to, to get some ventilation in there at the end of the day. Uh, you ensure that you're, you're covering those areas. Motion detection, I have the northeast office, uh, which would be office there on the north side. There's some windows there. The southeast office, which has the closet in it um, where some medications are stored. Um, I have a, a 
bay motion detector, and that would be on the north side because there is some uh, windows on the north side. So in the event that somebody has popped a window to get into the ambulance where something may be stored, um, we have that, uh, that back uh, row covered there. And then I did put one in the west conference room just so we have that layer of detection at the west end of the building. So the security system kit, uh, that's going to include your control panel, your keypad unit, battery backup, uh, the essentials that you need, uh, wireless receiver to communicate with your devices, digital cellular communicator again. Um, I did have a wireless repeater on this one. This is uh, rather safe than sorry. Uh, I know that I added in there just because of the length of that building and we've got some block walls in there, so I did record, uh, um, quote in a repeater for that. Um, in the event that we don't need it, obviously we can remove that. Um, it's easier to remove it than to come back and ask for more money. So um, that's the reason I put that in there. Got your motion detectors. The wireless transmitters, those would uh, be tied into your overhead door uh, uh, track mount contacts, so that just uh, allows us to get that wireless signal back to the control panel. We have some installation set up and, uh, and training. Uh, so you see your outright purchase uh, option, which is the $1,733.19 with $34.90 per month as your monthly monitoring, or you have the 36 or the 60 month security as a service where Next Tech actually owns the equipment, maintains it, and monitors it. So you'd be looking at that $98.79 or $72.29. Clear as mud. Yeah, very clear. Very clear. Did a good job. Yeah. Right, you if you have a couple minutes, um, I'd be happy to log in and show you um, some cameras and show you what you'd be expecting. Feel that is important to be able to see the difference that you might be uh, seeing if you have a few minutes. I know you guys are busy folks and I can do it. Okay. Well, I'm going to head off to the north and let you have a question. Well, I think so. I'll let you look at it. Okay. Yeah. I had to come down here for a little quarter pair of 8.45 a.m. Judge Johnson gets to start early, which is fun. I'm going to come up at 5.36 every morning. Okay. I will try to look at some more jails this summer, but we have had a crime spree up in Ellsworth, like you wouldn't believe. Hmm. They got 25 people coming up for sentencing, almost all on drug cases. When did we find out about the Iowa County and our interactive yeah. TV? They were supposed to have it up. This week, but I have yet to see it. And that was my list of things to do today, and I don't see it. Is that very mm -hmm. We've got this bill, mm -hmm. the Great Bend Regional, right? Mm -hmm. No, that's what I tried to tell the sheriff. They did an MRI on it. Yeah. Well, they've got some write offs, but they did an MRI on it. Okay, well, I didn't even share it yet. I just wanted to and the, the, you can, once you have somebody in custody, if they become an expensive prisoner, guess what? You're their, you're their Blue Cross Blue Shield. Well, he, claim, he claims a brain injury, and he's sufficiently obnoxious that people play his game. I just think he's a drunk. Well, I didn't have to give it to him yet, because I wanted to. See, that's the one drawback, real quick, that's the one drawback to farming prisoners out to other jails. Their sheriff might say, oh, well, gee, I don't want to get sued, so let's go and do all these tests. And, hey, Stafford County will pay for it anyway. Yeah. Yeah. So at least when you have your own jail, you, can, you the sheriff, can put your foot down and say, heck, we're... Okay, <laughs> I just want to make sure. <laughs> well, I told, I told Jeff he was going to get hit with that bill. He thought he was going to be okay. real clever. And, you know, well, well, we'll, we'll, I'll ask George Walters to give him an OR bond, Jeff. Don't work that way. I about had a stroke when I opened it yesterday. Mm -hmm. Gray County got burned real bad one time when they 
shot somebody, took them to the hospital, the hospital will put them on life support, and Gray County decided, oh, let's unarrest him. You can't unarrest him. <laughs> <laughs> Do overs. <laughs> Well, I'll see you next one. All right. I had my fingers crossed when we did that. Yeah. 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 You guys know what, by chance what the um, public bonus um, is? <laughs> what or are you? What is that DWL? sent into the state by yeah. July. Well, people. Um, can we do that next week? guy's here. He's going to come. He's going. When do we want to have a department? I don't know. What's, 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 what's the deadline to send all this into the state? Oh. July. Send what? The budget. So yeah, I have an election this year. That's yeah, why I'm pushing to get him to the state. August 25th, but we have to publish and all that. Usually we're right up against that deadline. Come here. He's trying to get on the internet here. That DWLG is asking for a security number or something. What did it ask you for? Uh, security key. There's a public one. We have one there. Um, yeah, let's do the, the DW. If you get on there, that one's a pretty uh, secure. It might block it. Um, well, that's what uh, I, uh, I love. Texas. Harvest it's not going to mount too much. It should be done. So it'll, be right time, it'll, be it'll be better in July than it is now. So, like July 9th? I think it'd be better than hurry up and have it. Tomorrow. Do you want noon or breakfast? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Or, yeah. Wait, so we're, we're Yeah, we better have it. Okay. So, 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 so this fails, it might be because of the access point in case we'll fall back to a different one if this fails. Who? Wait, Wait. Will he do that oh. here? I think it's going to go. Oh, okay. Uh, if you do it in the area, you're going to have to drive over and drive back. But just do it over here. 
Pizza is fine. Mm -hmm. I have ice cream from Frozen Street. Have you been over there yet? No. Me either. Next time I go, I'm going to have Big Blue Inn. Oh, I Did know. Did you see that? Yes. We'll have a, a short, uh, small department that we need to have the ice cream stuff. Okay. <laughs> okay. At noon on the 9th. Yeah. Go back and get your Wi Fi selections. selections. Do uh, Rod. Uh, and it's the other thing. Because that one's unsecured. Or, uh, it's not running through my firewall. Okay. Uh, exclamation. Antlers. Exclamation. And that one, because my sonic bolt is probably going to block your VPN. That's a good bit. Mm -hmm. Right? That you got? Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to need to edit that portion. I'm going to edit no, it's public. Isn't that the public? Yes. The password? Yeah. What he's connected to now is Luann's, which is not on our net, with not on the main network. It allows for oil and gas guys, customers to be able to use the web. Speaking of which, the county website, is it, I haven't looked at it lately, is it? I send them maintenance to Access to the cameras um, would have this client installed on their on their PC. Um, once you log in, uh, you can see a list of your servers over here along the left side. So each one of your facilities, courthouse, uh, EMS, uh, health services, would each have their own individual server. But what's nice is we can open up uh, any one of these and uh, pull in a uh, camera into that particular window from any one of these locations. So this is like our back parking lot at our uh, Hayes office. Um, up here across the top you have your different uh, layout views. So we can pull any one of uh, the cameras into um, any one of those spots. So we're going to grab that one. That one pulls in our marketing building. This particular view, um, we can just pull in whichever cameras from any of the sites that we want. So if we want one broad overall of each of them, when you log in, uh, we can have it set up. And up here, it allows you to save this view. So if we want to come back to this particular view or this setup the next time, if this is uh, Clayton, I'll use your name for example. If this is a, a, a view that you like and want to come back to, uh, we'll save that in a view section. Menu over here, you would have your list of Clayton's view, um, and you just double click on that, and it takes you back to your predefined view. So, this is our back parking lot looking down the long strip mall at, at that particular office. Um, one nice thing is, we can double click on any one of these, and it takes us to a large screen view. Um, Within this, now we can do what they call a digital pan tilt and zoom. So the lens itself is not moving, the camera head is not moving left or right. It's enlarging the image and use, utilizing the resolution that's uh, within that image. Um, so now all I'm using is the scroll wheel on my mouse, and I can digitally start enlarging into the particular areas that I have concerns with. Can you go over there and look at that 
license tag on that white car. Here. Right there. So it's a common question. Everybody wants to have license plate recognition. Mm -hmm. And that's one of those things that is going to be a variable that at certain times, in certain directions of the vehicle, and the way the lighting conditions are, you may get one time, and the next day you may not. Um, and because Kansas does not have front license plates, that's another reason for having multiple views of cameras and different camera angles as you try to get a coming and a going view. Um, so, so, if I have to get the idea, oh, yeah. say 119 FCM. <laughs> But now we can at least make out a make and model right, of a vehicle. Right. Um, I'll show you what a uh, analog camera looks like, just so you can compare. So here's an IP uh, resolution camera. Here's an analog based resolution camera. So from afar, it doesn't look too bad. Uh, but as you digitally start enlarging or you start zooming into an area, you see the difference in the resolution. Outside of about 15 to 20 feet on an analog camera, you're going to have an image like this it yields useless and even that we are trying to take this to court and, and to hold somebody liable to damages to your property or the theft of, of equipment or inventory that you may have. So uh, I think this is a good example of maybe not choosing to base a decision solely on price because uh, this is something that you would have to uh, come up against. As far as a camera for, say, like your interior um, a door area on the north side, um, you'd be looking at something similar to uh, this video resolution quality. Um, so uh, we can actually, this is in what we call H.264 uh, layout. So it's actually, it's a 16 by 9 resolution. So it's 16 uh, is the wider, 9 is the taller. Well, if we're looking down the hallway and we need to have a corridor view with the brand of cameras that we're using, we can flip that resolution and keep all of that resolution right down the middle of the hallway so that we're not wasting it on the walls, on, on the lighting units. So um, this is one of the only camera manufacturers that has that ability to do that. Um, another thing that we can look at doing is the maps. Uh, the maps is take these Google Earth images that I just showed you, and now we can load those directly in here. So instead of having to see a list of each of your cameras and having to comprehend, now we can digitally see this and say, okay, we want to click on our hallway camera. It takes you directly there. So most people relate graphically better than they do having to comprehend through that list of cameras. So I double click, it takes me back to the main screen. You saw this one light up blue. That indicates that there's motion. So there's going to be somebody uh, probably moving up this, uh, here at this desk. It's just a 2 megapixel camera here. So if we need to see this area here at the desk or at a door area or uh, see a view, and I'll show you something else we can do, and that's pulling uh, We can pull that same camera into all three windows if we want to. So now you see the, that the camera truly, the lens truly isn't moving, the camera head isn't moving. We can watch in detail three separate areas with one camera 
whereas an analog camera would be a static view. What you see is what you get. That's the video feed. That the, the camera on an analog side, it's just them. It's, it's, it's just sitting out there. It's just spitting out the video feed. Whereas an IP camera has a processor in it, like a computer. And so it's a mini computer that allows you to do these analytic type uh, instances. So we can scroll in in all three different areas. And the camera's still recording. So in the event that you do need to uh, go back and do playback of something, so up here along the top left is your main your main menu. So you have your live view, your playback, and your settings your configuration page. You won't do hardly anything in the configuration setup. That's for our technicians. Playback and live. So once we select that, we can select our particular camera. It's going to default to the last two hours in our search range, but we can open up a calendar view and we can search over a date and time range. So I'm just going to let it search for the last two hours. And what you'll see is blue lines, which there's only a few of them here. And those would be your motion activated recordings. So when we set the cameras up, we'll be having them record based on motion not 24 seven unless that's a specific, a specific request. What this allows you to do is not have to go through hours of video recordings if something happens. Now we can uh, zoom in on the timeline and say, okay, um, UPS guy said that they delivered at 8.45 or 8.44. Small bird. the camera uh, was adjusting to different lighting so as clouds continue to move by um, you'll see a shift as the camera auto adjusts to compensate for that light or lack of light. Um, so this is on A Street so um, you can see the, the busy truck. Mm -hmm. um, we can back this up and now we can do digital pan tilt zoom within your playback. Whereas an analog type camera, the video stream you, the camera's pushing out is the video stream you get. So in the event that this vehicle is not authorized to be on your property, something like that, we can export this in a snapshot. So we can take a snapshot of this and say, okay, while we're here, um, we can uh, download this to a USB flash drive. Um, and what's nice about that is you can give that to your sheriff's department and it embeds the video player, the free video player. So when the sheriff is, plugs that into his computer, now he has the ability to pull in that camera into those four windows, digitally enlarge it, and do everything that he could if he had the client right there on his desk, which is really nice. Um, we can burn it to a DVD. We can store it to or export it to your specific PC. So if you're sitting at, if the clerk's sitting at her desk and she needs to see something, she can download it directly to that. And that's all based on the username and password and privileges. So if this username only has the ability to do live viewing, we can set that up. If they need to have admin privileges to see live view and playback, we can give that based on their username and password. Um, another thing that's um, okay, yeah, a good example of it already here. So this is a thumbnail search. So we're not sure what time somebody dropped something off or what time a piece of equipment at the road bridge department uh, became missing. We can uh, click on our thumbnail search, and what it will do is it will take those pull those snapshots throughout a period of time. So 7:27, we can see there was just our black next day vehicle in there. Now it's um, 914, still just a black vehicle. Well, at 945, 
now we have this white truck in here. So now we've narrowed down that window that we need to search. It really helps you speed up those analytics of finding when you need to, to go back in and pull the footage. Um, so now we can go back into our timeline and we can redefine this to say on this date from 9, you know, uh, 14 to 9.45 we can see and it actually took a snapshot at 9.43 to see the, the truck pulling into the parking lot. So we, we even know now at a, at a closer timeline of exactly what that, if that took place. Mm -hmm. So uh, a lot of information. I, I hope I didn't uh, take up too much of your time, but hopefully there's important information for you guys to make a decision um, when it comes down to reviewing the bids, because you will see a wide range of technology and pricing. And like I said, I guarantee that it won't be the, the lowest dollar amount. And I'm, I'm, I'm accepting of that, but I feel our solution is far superior. Okay. Good job. All right. Well, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Are you excited for a I am. Really? Yep. Mm -hmm. Does Rosetta? Cousin. Cousin of ours. Cousin. Okay. We'll adjourn.